What's going on everybody? Alex with you here again as usual. Thanks for dropping by for yet another chess video. Very exciting video today. We finally have the iChess One electronic folding chess board. Now, if you have been following my chess channel uh, probably about half a year ago, I have already reviewed the iChess One electronic chess board. But at that time, uh, when I was doing the review, the board itself was sort of going through some transitional period where it was still partly being modified and and basically redesigned. Uh, finally, we have the board that I will share with you guys that at this point is gonna be probably more or less of what we will expect out of the final production model. There's a lot of changes that have been done. We're gonna take a closer look at not only the outside of the board and how it looks ultimately different and redefined from the previous model, but also at some of the compatibilities, some of the features that we are now going to expect that have not been available in the previous model. Let's go ahead and jump in and I'll show you all that this board has to offer. Alrighty, let's start off by just taking a look at the outside carrying case that will come with the board. It's uh, pretty much the same carrying case that we've seen with the previous IHS one. The material from which the case is made, I believe is, well, to me, it feels kind of like wool. It does kind of look like wool. It's sort of stitched together, as you could see with the stitch ends being on the outside. I've mentioned that I like this particular case design, even with the first time I did the review of this video. The design of the case hasn't really undergone many changes. You still have the, the little strap right over here that you can basically carry this particular case holding sideways. Or if you wanna have this particular case go over your shoulder, you have this really nice strap here that's kind of thickened here on the very top, as you can see here. I think the construction's really well done. You can see the multiple stitching that goes through both the pad and the straps are really nice and strong. You have these metal clips here. Everything looks really well done. On the bottom of the case, we have the really nice stitched iChess One logo, or iChess in this case, but it is an iChess One board. That's the name of it. When you flip this part over, you can see the inside of it's Velcroed. This is how you access the board. But before we get in here, I also want to mention that there's this zip case right over here that unzips just like that. Although this zipped part doesn't go all the way to the ends, uh, you do get the entire space of the hole all the way to the very ends as far as the capacity of this particular pocket. So you can choose to put a notebook in here, a game scoring book, you can put some pencils, whatever it is that you want to put in there. Carrying the case is really nice because the board's kind of really well balanced and I feel like the way that the case has been designed, it's ergonomically really quite comfortable to wear it. If you throw the strap right across your shoulder like this, and depending on what your height is, you can always have these side straps adjusted, whether you know you want it a little bit longer or shorter for me. The standard design is just right. You can kind of hold it like this. You can hold it over like this. And it sits well because it's it sort of uh, leans right against you. You can walk with it really well. It doesn't like wobble or anything, as you can see. So this is a nice way to carry it as well. You just kind of hold it by the side strap like that. And depending on where, where you need to go, it kind of looks like you got a nice little briefcase there. Also, sometimes one of the things is about some of the other bags, if they have the bag edges a little bit too rounded, it's kind of tricky to be able to position this. And especially if you want to put it on, like, of course, you can put it sideways on, on the table like this and just keep it. But because of the way that these particular pieces of fabric have been sewn together, it's really easy to be able to just stand it up like this and it, it's pretty it's pretty stable overall. You can just kind of stand it up like this or maybe if you want to stand it up on the side, it works as well either way. And it's nice and stable. It's not likely to fall or anything. On the inside we see just like before they did provide us with this like little canvas baggy thing. I don't know whether or not people will choose to keep it in the canvas baggy. Certainly by keeping it in this little cloth bag it will allow the board a little bit of extra protection from scratches that type of thing so we go ahead and pull out the board from within the case just like that the remainder of the inside of the case is just just this plain sort of uh fabric this wool fabric keeps the chessboard warm on a cold day now this little cloth bag that comes with your board 
Also has an IHS-1 logo, but this time I think it's just printed. It's not embroidered. These particular little strings can allow you to close this as much as you can. Then you can tie it up. I'm not sure if anybody would really want to do that, but you do have that option. And then we'll go ahead and take out the actual board. Uh, here we go. This is the actual board. There you go. Look at that beauty. I think the company terms this as the first foldable electronic chessboard. The really nice design really nice visible notation on all sides as you guys can see quite a quite a, a visible nice little grain over here on the surface i really like how this particular design looks you got this sort of old school brass clip that's been present with the uh the previous one and it's also kind of follows the design of the like the european folded boards here it just kind of clips on there and it keeps it physically protected now they could have chosen a design to where it would be magnetically sealed, but if the magnet fails, then, you know, your board comes apart and all your pieces fall out and that wouldn't be good. So you do have two of those. You got one on this side and one on the other side, and they help to keep your pieces secured inside of the board. One of the biggest differences now is that um, in the previous board, we just had one little tiny round um, thing for your uh, power and they've replaced that now we have the USB-C for our power and the biggest biggest change for this whole board is now it does come with an internal battery which is charged up by USB-C now that's a big thing for me because if it came with some kind of a special um, some kind of a special cord or something like the Millennium boards usually come with some kind of a rounded cord that can be a little bit of a headache especially if you lose the cord in this particular case, given that it's a USB-C, even if I were to lose the cord that came with it, I have a bunch of USB-C cables laying around everywhere, so I never have to look around for a USB-C cable. The company itself has custom embroidered. They asked me what I would like on my board, and I told them just go ahead and put Alsu Chess. So you can see right over here, it's kind of hard to see in direct sunlight, but it does say Alsu Chess over here. Which is really nice. I'm, I'm, I'm really happy that they did that. So it's kind of my own custom board. And then there's this little tiny button right over here. Now this button, when you press it in, it actually physically feels like you're pressing in a button. It will light up if I press and hold it, it will turn the board on. We will see that shortly. On the back side of the board, right over here, we do see these tiny little rectangles. When the board is opened up, um, the communication is established between the two sides of the board. And we see the same thing on the other side. We saw the same thing with the original IHS-1 board. So nothing new there. Um, everything looks really nice. I really like, first of all, I like the uh, quality of the wood that's been used on this board. I really like that it looks and feels like an original wooden chessboard. In fact, if it wasn't for this little thing here on the side with the little button, you would probably not even think that this is an electronic chessboard. If you look at it from every angle, you might say, this is just a plain, book like you know the standard european type of uh, chessboard really well done now before we open this board up and show you guys the pieces um one thing worth mentioning and i believe that the original ihs1 board had this but i've had so many other different chess boards that i just wanted to mention this that there's a really nice attention to detail as you get right here in the middle they have made the uh, sort of the corners of this board in such a way that both the top and bottom they're kind of angled a little bit inwards so that way when you're closing this board that you don't pinch your finger and it's also a little bit easier for you to kind of get in between here these two two sides and be able to open it up so i think that's a really nice attention to detail i've reviewed recently the world chess travel chess set and they had just a just a flat flat coming together and I, when I saw this, I thought that's really nice. It might not be something that people would notice immediately, but given that I've reviewed so many different chess sets, I kind of pick up on these little minor details. Alrighty, now that we've looked at the outside of the board and pretty much covered everything I wanted to say, let's go ahead and jump in real quick and look at the inside. When we open this up also, we immediately see that there's a number of changes that have been done. So let's just go ahead and take a look from the top bottom we still get this little ihs1 pen that's kind of wooden on the outside it's a nice little pen fully functional the top portion here does not contain pieces it's just the bottom portion that will contain them this part is only meant to basically provide coverage for those pieces there so 
uh, but you still have that sort of a velvety finish on the top here with when you press it in kind of like that light feeling to it i believe the previous ihs one had it in green now we have it in black now as before we do have these tiny little pieces of cloth that run across the two sides of the board to kind of help to cover where the hinge is that way it looks better that way and there's less likelihood that anything will get scratched up i, I think that looks really nice um, so when the board is opened up we do have both of the hinges covered. Another big difference that you guys will notice here is that the pieces actually have been updated. You still have this little cord, but now we have the USB-C cord. I really like the attention to detail on this part too. You get the USB-C to USB-C small cord and then a USB-C to a USB-A adapter that will come, at least it came with mine. And then look at that, the, the actual ends of the USB-C cord are golden and the actual cord is cloth. So that's premium cord right there. Now this particular thing that used to hold the cord together is actually a phone stand. As you can see on both sides, on one side or the other side, you can put your phone in and it stands like this flat on the table. But depending on the thickness of your phone, whether your phone has a case or it doesn't have a case, or whether you want it at a slightly different angle, you can choose one versus the other. Or you can just choose to have your phone flat on the table like I do. Uh, here on the bottom we have the iChess logo, I think it's on both sides. The chess pieces that you guys see right over here is the 3.75 American Staunton Classic chess pieces. It is going to be a little bit different and we will see here shortly as far as the shape and the detail on these particular chess pieces as compared to the original iChess one. Unfortunately, as I said before, I had to return the original iChess one board for further development so I don't have the ability to directly compare these new pieces to the older ones but uh, I just wanted to let you guys know that I was really really happy to see this refinement of these particular chess pieces as you will see here shortly they are really really quite nice just like with the chestnut uh, this particular board does have the individual chess piece recognition system which is really quite nice to see and that really helps out in a lot of different situations, particularly when you have to set up a board for a specific position. If you're doing board editor type of thing, it really helps out to have individual chess piece recognition. So that way you don't have to sit and indicate in your software whether or not the piece you put on, you put on the board was a rook or a king. Uh, you just put the piece on and it recognizes it for what it is. But, uh, for the sake of just saving you guys a little bit of time, I figured we'll just go ahead and set these pieces up here and we'll kind of talk a little bit briefly about the shape of the pieces. So this is the Staunton, the American classic Staunton design. Pawns on both sides here look and feel more or less like regular pawns. There's really nothing unusual about them. The rooks, a little bit on the slender side with the top parts being a little bit kind of taller. Um, and then the knights here, well, the knights are gonna be kind of more or less what we would expect from standard classic knights. Not the German knights, but kind of somewhere in between. Maybe something more of like the library grandmaster chess set that I have, but bigger. Bigger since this is a 3.75 inch king chess set, we would expect all the other pieces to be bigger. So as far as the size overall of this chess set, this is kind of a standard tournament size chess set without going too big into like 4.4 or anything. This is what we would probably be expected to see at a tournament or something like that. The bishops here, you could see, they have this interesting sort of design. We've seen this with the updated Chestnut Pro chess set, we've had these sort of interesting little kind of a Hershey's Kisses tops with this, this top portion being a little bit flatter and a nice standard cut on these. The queens, nothing really unusual about the queens. The, the top portions, as you guys can see right over here, the cuts are not sharp or anything, just kind of subtle. And then we have the kings somewhat rounded here on top large finials not too detailed but at the same time not too not too crude as far as the the weight of the pieces we'll go ahead and measure the king measures at 46 grams so not too bad actually kind of on the heavy side light king here measures at 46 so that's nice to see usually we see some kind of a discrepancy between the light and the dark pieces the queen here measures at 39 so pretty close to the weight of the king they're not super light and they feel nice too. 38 grams, so that's good to see. 
The bishop, dark bishop, weighs in at 25, so a little bit lighter, but not terrible. And 24 for the light uh, bishop. The light knight is at 29, that's a good size. And then the dark knight is at 29 as well. The dark rook here, a little bit lighter at 24, kind of like the bishop. And the light rook is at 20, so just a few grams lighter. And then the pawns, the light pawn weighs in at 13, so that's good that it's sub, uh, that it's above 10 grams, that's already nice to see. And then 14 grams for the dark one. The nice thing that I really like about the, these particular pieces is that they all look and feel stable. So we don't have too much wobble, as you guys can see. The queens especially, look, look how quickly they return back. Kings are always gonna have a little bit more wobble because they're taller, so there's that little bit more. But yeah, we can see that the pieces come back without too much wobble, and that's, that's important. You might ask me, like, why, why are you doing this? Why is it important? We want stable pieces. All of them should be stable. So I can see even the pawns, nobody's wobbling too much. So that's, that's, that's a really nice stable set overall. So that's pretty much all I wanted to say about the actual chess set. The underside um, felt is actually kind of uh, in between thick. It's not like super thick to where you see the individual interthreading and everything. But at the same time, it's not one of those uh, less expensive, cheaper uh, felts where, where it's like a, a sticker. No, this is a nice amount of felt and they feel good with the amount of felt they have. They feel good on the board. Here's a little bit more about kind of a top down view of some of these pieces here to kind of give you guys a little bit more detail. Here's the knight followed by the bishop. Nice, nice amount of detail. Here's the top of the, of the queen. The finials of the kings are nice and aesthetic, I think, for an electronic chess set. This is a quite a nice little set. Even if it wasn't electronic, I would say it still looks really good. I like the way that the bishops look. Kind of nice and you know, most importantly, you know, all these pieces are well done, well finished, because I don't see any like defects or anything like that. Nothing that stands out. Fully set up on the board. I like to see that really nice contrast between the dark pieces here and then the board itself, the color of which is kind of this uh, nice golden rosewood. I feel like the light pieces, uh, they don't blend in with, with the light squares due to the fact that the light pieces have this sort of a, like a kind of a, a more of a beige yellow look versus the squares are kind of a more on the lighter side here. But yeah, really, really quite nice. All right, now that we've had a chance to review the physical characteristics of the board more or less, um, we're gonna jump into the part that I'm most excited about. And that is the, the part where we get to set up the pieces and connect the board to our, and, and in my case, it would be my phone. This is the part that I wish I could, as best as I could, convey to you guys and kind of give you guys an idea or a glimpse at how this board functions overall. Hopefully with this wind that we have outside here, I won't have any of my pieces fly away, but we'll take a look. When we are ready to actually play on this board, uh, whether it's online or offline, we turn it on and we kind of wait for a second. And then it, it turns and it blinks with blue. You guys might be able to see it, maybe not, but it is there, you see that it's, it's blinking. So that means it's ready for pairing. It's in pairing mode. I do apologize for the glare I can get on the screen here from time to time, but this is what the iChess One app will look like on the phone, at least on my phone, on the Android right now. This is kind of what it looks like. The, the app is not fully complete as of yet. They're still working endlessly on all the different modifications and all the things that we're gonna get once the board hits the market. But um, we do have the ability to play online as of now. I've played online and I'll show you what it's like to play online. We're gonna have play against the AI right over here. You can have a play against a friend, which is, I will also show you that option. It's basically when you have two people in the same room and you can record the game by clicking on here and uh, just follow the game through and then actually be able to save it as a PGN file afterwards, which is gonna be really exciting. In fact, any games you're playing, whether it's against the AI or whether it's against, you're gonna be able to save it as a PGN file and export it out, which is gonna be really cool. That's uh, something that's gonna be probably very important to some people. You can do um, chess puzzles here, game analysis, game history. So there's gonna be a lot of really cool stuff. Now, one of the cool things that I really like about the whole 
company is that they've been really open with me they've been really honest and they've been doing modifications and updates almost every day i'll go to my email and i'll get things like this uh, which says uh, a new update a new update feature and then each update that that they do they actually will uh, show what exactly they, they have been doing on the update so here for example it says i know it might be focusing kind of hard but it's, it says informing board about game pause resume update fbn before sending offline game status so that so far if we go down here in the time frame that they've been doing these updates they've had 86 updates that kind of goes to show you that like i get these little updates almost every day that goes to show you that this company is working day and night to get us the software to work really well and that's one of the things that i've been really pleased with this company because i've been uh, emailing Janusz and you know he's kind of on the same boat with me a software for a chess board like this has to work flawlessly and that's really really important we will see that even though not everything is finished in the application everything that works actually works really well so we'll get a chance to see that in just a second okay so here i have uh, started a game where I'm just kind of showing you guys as an example. Right down here, it might be a little bit hard for you guys to see, but pay attention to this particular border right over here and see how quickly we're gonna have the connection be established when I'm moving the pieces around. See how quickly and seamlessly this is gonna work. Like I said, it's kind of hard for me to fit everything in here, but I'm just gonna run through the game and move some pieces around and you guys just pay attention to this little part now this is a situation where we have a casual game between two players in the same room so we're just testing to see sort of the connection speed and see if everything sort of follows really well here as it does here okay so let's take a quick look so we're just going to go ahead and move some pieces around okay I'm not even thinking really, I'm just basically going through. Okay, whose turn was it? And like I said, it's a nonsense game, but you see here, like even if I start making complete nonsense moves right now, check this out. So like, like this, watch. How quickly can this board move? Now, if you do an incorrect move, for example, like this, it's gonna tell you, go back, you didn't make a move. Or like, you know, if, if a move cannot be made, for example, if I go here, it's gonna say, no, 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 go back, okay? So that's nice to see, it's working quickly, so see? So see, really, really fast, see? And now I'm in check, for example, if I make here, it says, no, 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 go back. See, it's moving very fast, very quickly. Now I'm gonna show you a game that I am playing currently online on uh, Lee Chess. Uh, we have a time interval of, I think, 15 minutes. So I'm not going to play this game through and through, but I just want to kind of show you guys also that it's uh, it plays really well. Hopefully you guys will be able to see the screen just as I'm able to show you. Um, just overall, like, how, like, I'm not trying to hide anything here. Like, it works really well. And I also hope that you guys can see the LED lights here. Now, one of the things that I really like about the LED lights in this particular case is um, first of all when you pick up a piece it shows you where that piece can go so here here or here you guys see that so if i put uh, pick up this piece it'll show you where i can take it see that is a nice consideration the led lights are pretty pretty bright inside the house they're really bright outside we're outside right now we're not in direct light but we're still in you know pretty pretty bright environment now I have talked before about how sometimes playing on an electronic chessboard, you run into situations where because the uh, because the way that the the connection there might be a little bit of a lag between, let's say the uh, um, 
your movement and then the phone or the online registering it as so like i said i'm not really thinking right now i'm just kind of playing for fun and showing you guys how this works but um it's really fast just like the original ihs1 board and it works in such a way that uh, as you can see you know things work fast you can play a rapid game you can play a blitz game you can play a bullet game here and that is what ihs1 i feel like aims for they want a quick play as well as classical play they want to be able to give you the option of not having to tinker around with the communication not having to have issues while you're playing the game that's why i feel like ihs1 does really well like i've enjoyed playing on many different electronic chessboards but I particularly enjoyed playing on the IHS-1 for that particular reason, just because it's it's so quick, in my opinion, it's just so, so fast. I might be overstretching, but I'm just, I'm not really even concerned so much about winning or losing this game. It's just kind of to show you guys. Even though I'd love to be able to finish this game, I'm already probably making some blunders here. Um, so, it's okay. I'm gonna be making some, or maybe, you never know, they might be making blunders here. A blunder, for example, where they blunder away their, their night. Like this. I really also like the fact that the pieces are really stable. Like sometimes you think that everything's perfect, but it's not. And then it just kind of ends up to where uh, some pieces are unstable or wobbly or something like that. So as you can see, so far we haven't had any issues and we're kind of sort of playing through the game pretty well. In my opinion, as far as the aesthetics, the IHS-1 looks and feels like a board you would expect to see at your local chess clubs. The thing that I feel like is a selling point for me as far as the IHS-1 is just how it plays. It, it's so swift, it's so quick, and it plays without making any mistakes. I know I've harped on this again and again many times with many different chess boards, but I feel like there's a, a lot of frustration that can be had if you have a board, an electronic chess board, and you think that well, you know, it's really designed for one thing is that that's to play chess and it, it, and it gives you issues. It gives you like different problems. Like you pick up a piece or you knock into a piece and all of a sudden the entire board gets confused or whatnot. But like in this case, I feel this, this board has so much to offer as far as functionality. It works really well. I've had a chance to test this board out. Now, like I said, because they're still sort of preparing the software for final production, we don't have all the options yet. We can uh, record our games by playing in the same room. We can play online. We will be able to play online on Lee Chess and Chess.com. The AI section is in its final development, so we'll be able to see that here within the next probably couple of weeks. That is another nice thing that I really like about this company is that they're being very straightforward and very open. They, the the founder of this company emails me and I communicate with him frequently and he says, you know, this is our timeline. This is what we're going to be doing. You know, with it, by the end of this week or whatever, we hope to have the AI section completed. By the end of next week, we hope to have this completed. And it's nice to see that they have a rigorous timeline by which they're actually getting stuff done and getting this board prepared. It really shows that this company really cares to have the final product be a final product that people are going to be happy with not like oh we bought this board and then half of the stuff works and half of the stuff doesn't work you know because nobody wants that you know we don't want hopes we we want to see things working properly especially if we're going to invest money into it um so chess puzzles is another thing that we're going to be able to do janush has been in contact with graham o'neill the same gentleman that has been able to create a lot of those um uh, DLL files that allow us to connect a lot of these electronic boards to like Fritz and Arena and Chessbase and uh, Lucas Chess and all those and they have already created a driver for this so I have contacted Graham O'Neill 
recently and I, I would like to be able to make a more in-depth video on the actual functionalities of this especially as we get more updates and kind of move move along I'm hoping to make a subsequent video here shortly that will talk about how this board connects to Fritz to Arena to Lucas Chess to uh, Shredder and so that way we can take a closer look and see how that functions. When I had to give back the original HS1 board, uh, I was really looking forward to the time when I can have this board and I finally have it. When you have a nice board that you're really happy with, that works really well and doesn't give you any problems, you're a lot more likely to switch to playing on the board as opposed to playing on the computer because Let's face it, on the computer it's always really easy to play and if your boards are giving you problems, even if they're small problems, you're a lot less likely to just leave the board on the shelf anytime you want to play chess. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully within the next couple of weeks I'll be able to make a couple of other videos showing you guys more in depth about how it communicates with your phone and, and kind of go from there and show you guys a lot more of the functionality of the board, okay? As always, I hope you guys have a great day, stay safe, get to play more chess, and I'll see you guys in the next video, okay? Bye-bye.